Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Happy Friday, everybody. Now, there are a million places I'd like to start this show. However, I saw some online feedback and word reached me on how yesterday's show went, which after that heat performance, we were obsessing over a cupcake for for a while. So I've learned. I was alerted to YouTube comments that came for heat tears, and they didn't really get them. And I don't think they're going to get them today because Jeremy's in. And I've already been sandblasted with propaganda from him. So let's just get this out of the way. Jeremy Taché, and I know you're probably not the biggest fan uh, of how I just lobbed this one up. Don't love it. Yeah, but I am grateful for you in many ways. Because by comparison, I'm the likable Heat fan on the show now. Which is an amazing face turn for me. I am rooting for the Miami Heat to lose tonight. However... I also (laughs) was rooting for the Miami Heat to lose in this exact spot. To the same team. To the same team. However, it wasn't the exact spot because Jimmy Butler is out. And he's out for uh, six to eight weeks I saw online. Maybe that's up for – maybe that's conjecture. But Jimmy Butler is out. And I think part of me wants Miami to win this game because then you go into a Boston Celtics series with nothing to lose. Everything to game. Uh, amazing night spent listening to WEEI is what you have to gain. If if the Miami Heat manage to get one of those first two games, it's all worth it. But I will bring you in here because I want the Miami Heat to be smacked in the face today with a resounding definitive message that says it's time to recognize what you're doing right now cannot continue the plan of having Jimmy Butler be your best offensive player you got two Eastern Conference championships out of it congrats to you in the face of many odds you you maximize this roster but you failed to get players that would have improved this team and you need to work towards that Jeremy the floor is yours um I think that if you were going to have issue with a cupcake being eaten then valerie's name probably should have been on the box should have been that's probably what should have happened and i just think the fact that it wasn't and then there was screaming that was happening in the other room is it's asinine honestly if you ask me i'm a little uncomfortable turning it into content quite honestly i thought it was a bad look all around I actually said that in the pre-production meeting and got shouted over. I don't know what meeting you're referring to. That being said, uh, when it comes to the Heat, look, I I, I understand your complaints, and I think a, a thing that's totally fair, um, one misrepresentation that happened earlier this week was acting like Heat Twitter is like me. It's not. No. I'm the positive one. Yeah, it's um, not? No. Most of really? Heat Twitter— Maybe I'm chewed up in your algo just yeah. because I'm close to the— we, we operate off the same Wi-Fi router, yeah. but I am I am really bummed at uh, the tone that he Twitter has taken. It used to be a far more miserable place. I, I think that <laughs> uh, you're missing the misery. If you really if you really dive in there, there's still a lot of misery. And throughout this season, many fans being asked to be put out of their misery. A lot of them commiserating with you in the same feelings about Kyle Lowry. Yeah. Um, now, those fans were looking at Terry Rozier's season and having a different reaction than I they enjoyed did. Kyle Lowry giving the middle finger to Bam underneath under his, his shirt. Jersey. Yeah. I did kind of, because I don't like what Heat fandom has become, I 
kind of popped for Kyle Lowry doing that a little bit, sure. which is weird because you know how much I dislike Kyle Lowry. Yeah, you're all you're all tied up in some yeah. very interesting emotions yeah. these days. Jeremy, here's where I'm at. Uh, I think Jimmy Butler has fallen off the cliff that we all feared was coming. Like when he signed the contract, Tibbs minutes the whole the whole thing, and he proved me wrong spectacularly time and time again. He had the lasting image from that bubble finals. What he did against Milwaukee, Tony and I were just slack jawed watching those highlights, seeing Jimmy Butler have so much lift in his legs, and this was just last year. He's changed as a player. He's definitely aged. And I think generally what what is really happening with me, Jeremy, is I think after all this time, I want to celebrate the relationship that I've had with Bam Adebayo and the discussion and the debate, but I'm tired. I'm just tired of having the Bam talks, and I know we're on the precipice of another big Bam legacy game. This dude is a fully formed pro yeah, he is. at this point. This is a ridiculous conversation to keep having. I, I don't. Um, I think the perception on Bam from, from your end is uh, a different one than what I have. I, to me, what Bam did against the Sixers, given um, the offensive limitations of the team in terms of just getting him the ball, Right, Tyler Hero is the only playmaker. Uh, what he did defensively against Embiid and bothering him was huge. Right, nobody stops Embiid, and mm-hmm. and and he really made him have an inefficient game on the offensive end. I'm also and by tired the way, Joel too. Embiid I'm also is tired. a great defender, I'm and so in I'm turn, I'm also tired of touting what he does defensively. Well, like, but that's just so. I so what you he's have a is just player. I have band fatigue. Yeah, you just have fatigue of this group. You're just yeah. tired. Yeah, and I think so, it's time for a change. I think right, but I think time it's been for a change when you're having enough. success. Like so, I, and this not good enough element i get it there there's a um look it, it's the riley quote right there's winning and there's misery yeah right and so you want to win championships i'm a byproduct I do think, of this culture that i helped create jeremy and i'm miserable i do think that when you look at this era of miami heat basketball the last four years now four and a half years it'll be five years either after tonight or that's how time works in in a in a week um this this era is probably the second best era in Miami Heat history behind the big three. Um, you've now... Yeah, because they have the, the banners to show for it. I would say that the uh, the Zoe Timmy teams were better. It's influential. And, and you could better. even argue, obviously, because they won a championship with Shaq and Wade, but that was just such that a was, small run. Yeah, that, that was weird. NBA doesn't typically work like that, right. flash in the pan, and then they, they immediately fall, fell off. Right. Honestly, if anybody wants to... I know there's a lot of people complaining about the Jimmy Butler injury. If you want to look at the Heat's history in terms of impactful injuries... It doesn't crack like top three because this team doesn't have a legitimate shot to win the title. You have Goran Dragic and Bam Adebayo in the bubble getting injured. And and I do think that that does change the the series somewhat. And also you have Dwayne Wade uh, in Game 7 in the Eastern Conference Finals with a rib injury that severely hampered his ability to get lift on his shot against the Detroit Pistons. Guys, we're very divided right now. Can I bring us back together? And let's laugh at the Pacers and the Magic because we can all agree right now the heat, it looks bad. It's In terms bad. of championship odds, like winning the entire thing yeah. without Jimmy. Without Jimmy. The Heat currently have better odds to win the title <laughs> than the Pacers that's amazing. and that, the Magic. That's everybody being afraid that Spoh's going to paint a masterpiece. But because there is something Spoh, to right. that. Spoh's a sicko. But Mike, because he loves this, I think he low-key loves but I, this yeah. situation. But Mike, but that, I think this speaks volumes. As much as you want to complain. It does. The Heat are still like respected. Like, I, uh, this team has respect. Don't, don't get it twisted. I'd much rather be us than than the Pacers and yes I use us I am a Heat fan I could be tired of Jeremy Tajay and Ryan Cortez and this Heat team and this roster and still generally want this team to succeed I think the best path for success is to have a tough breakup and that tough breakup may come with Jimmy Butler it really we need to reevaluate that we need to look at Bam especially if Bam does here's what I think Bam is going to do He's think, going to play his entire career on the Miami Heat. I, I think Bam is going to take a nice hard look at all those Mike McDaniel quotes that he has in his locker. I thought about, he was going to look in the mirror when you were first talking. No, 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 because he's got all these inspirational quotes in his locker about being assertive. And I do think Bam is going to come out with the mindset that i got to get my shots up. This is this is my time. This is the team that I do it against. Would have been great last game. But I'm worried he's going to do the Bam thing where he just gets shots up to get shots up and there's no arc on these shots and he's basically shot-putting these hook shots from the lane just to show everybody that he's capable of actually shooting it. 
Can I take a quick victory lap? What was the uh, the end result of the Nick Batum? Jess was right. Violation? They did not call it on the two minute report that Nick Batum pushed Tyler Hero in the back. Congratulations, Which he clearly Jessica. did. He uh, absolutely did. The he arm did was it. fully. It's that's a bad job by Tyler. You got you got to sell that. There's sell no it. way that you can be that close to the half court line. Yes, you know. No, that's, that's it. That period. That's the pressure. And actually, give give the the Sixers credit. And actually, where you give Kyle Lowry credit is that their defensive scheme changed late in that game, in part because. Kyle understood, hey, if you put a ton of pressure on the Heat guards, yeah. th- especially if it's just Hawkes and Hero handling the ball, they're going to have difficulties with it. That's the part that's interesting about tonight's game. Yeah, is now. Is there anything interesting about tonight's game? Well, yeah. if you're looking at it from yeah. a Heat perspective, the fact that, that there's an entire <laughs> roster the construction could that... be in the playoffs. <laughs> well, that's crazy. Yeah, I want to get the Bulls' perspective in a, in a moment, but I do think that this game does have some relatively huge significance and it's not just about punching a ticket into the postseason it's about what you do with this roster because if you get eliminated tonight despite the injury to Jimmy Butler who looks like a different player and has since the NBA finals last year and this is a really devastating injury for him to suffer when you've been careful with his body so he'd be fresh for this and he essentially got hurt by not going straight up to the cup like he would have against the Milwaukee Bucks last year. I understand going the to the free throw line. The pump fake was crazy. Like, no reason to pump no fake No reason whatsoever. Zero reason to pump Dude, fake. Dude, that is aging. What is happening? No, but it's true. The I would have said that yesterday. We didn't, we didn't I, the injury is a byproduct of his game changing because of his age. And whether you want to acknowledge it or not, whether he Twitter wants to acknowledge it or not, Jimmy Butler acknowledged it with his decision to not go straight up. Mike's pointing right now. He's right. He's absolutely right. 100%. I just think that, uh, first of all, when we talk about drawing fouls in games like this where you're already trying to muck it up, Embiid was lauded by everybody, including the broadcast, for his ability to draw fouls. Jimmy Butler does a lot of the same thing in his game. But it's fair to say. The questioning of the pump fake is the most Monday morning quarterback thing ever. Yeah, it's amazing. I questioned it when it happened. I questioned it when it happened. He he pump fakes so much. He doesn't make the layup. He doesn't make the layup. To me... It's in the class with Ben Simmons not making That's that, amazing. not taking that layup. Him not That's going crazy. straight up. You're in a tight game to not get the two when that guy was dunking all over the place against the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm sorry. It's in that class. He got hurt because he pump faked because he wanted to go to the line. There's two points right there. How many points do you get from the line? Two. Best case scenario. Two. One. Well, Best case scenario, three, you make the first, you miss a, a I, I understand. But he's going to the line for two. You got two easy ones right there by just going straight up. We're trying to get Kelly Oubre in foul trouble. But now without Jimmy, oh, the the space that they're in is an interesting one, right? Because in the second half of their game against the 76ers, the offense was entirely predictable. It was put the ball in Tyler's hands. You only ran a couple of actions. And basically, he was left to try to improvise and figure it out. Now, with a couple of days to prep, it's about how the Heat will replace Jimmy Butler, and it's likely on the offensive end going to come from a couple of their really young players. A rookie in Jaime Jaquez Jr., who's the only other player on the team who can operate out of the mid-post, and Niko Jovic, who he's the guy that has really sparked this offense a lot throughout the season. The reason that I hope that they're able to get to the next round, aside from the fact that I you know, maybe get to be a part of a broadcast, is the fact that you get to see what those guys, what Tyler Hero what Nico Jovic, what Jaime Hawkins Jr. look like going up against right. the best team in show, your conference show, as a measuring show, stick going forward. Showcasing assets, potentially, to finally improve this team where That's the front office of has failed. We can be kind and say they didn't get these guys, or you can be a little bit more coarse I with mean, the, Jovic the and, ha- and say that they failed. Jovic and Hawkins are had good seasons. Yeah, you know? and they're pieces I mean, of the future. I mean, uh, uh, Jovic like, is clearly your starting we all, four. We all know the NBA forward. is going to collude to dilute their actual – like value mm-hmm. <laughs> in terms of trade. We, we all know that's going to happen. It's happening? Now? It's happened already. It uh, Jess, I see you smiling the entire Wait, time. Wait, the NBA is working against the Heat? Oh, I mean, it was very I clear. I mean, they always are. But yeah, that's haven't very you clear. Been part of the show for very 20 clear. years? I have a question. Tony Brothers, man. You want them to blow up the team, you yes. said, right? Yes, I do. I don't but think But do you the trust this enough. front office to fix the problem? That's a, I, they haven't I do. Really, they, I, I, I must. I must, must you? I trust <laughs> the front office. Must you? I must. What if Bam is the solution and you bring in a new front office? Guys, Jeremy, your thoughts on them replacing the front office? Bam is not the solution. Bam is not. What if he could be the solution? Jeremy, if you had to fix the heat, would you replace the players or the front office? Jeremy. 
Wow. What are you doing? Don't I'm just asking the, the questions Don't around here. <laughs> Solution doesn't sh put <laughs> up nine shots in yeah. a pivotal game. I, to answer your <laughs> question directly, Billy, I have more faith in the front office figuring it out, even though they have failed and put this head coach, who I rate immensely, in a difficult spot time and time again with their failures. Some of that's collusion. Some of that's their own ego. But – I do have faith in them figuring it out more than I have faith in this current roster getting a year older and getting to that final that final stop on the mountain, the summit. I, I just don't see it in today's NBA landscape. Dude, they're not even good enough right now. They're in a play in for the final playoff spot in the East. They have enough it's where they were last year. I yeah, understand. Exactly right. but we have enough with a healthy Jimmy Butler. Dude, yeah. sometimes yeah. teams I'm just, just need adversity. Spell. You know. I but, no, I mean they were three games away from being a three seed. Yeah, that's I right. Have more Faith in the Heat than the Bulls. Yeah. Because yeah. the Bulls, if they do make the playoff, will have had the worst uh, <laughs> record, I believe, since 2004 of an Eastern Conference playoff. The team. Bulls have the longest odds in the entire league to win the championship. They also have the hottest hand. Yeah. <laughs> it also, <laughs> like, right. the report is Jimmy's out a couple weeks. Like, that could be game two of the first round with the NBA schedule. Uh, that's an argument for it. I think the, the, the overriding argument for winning today, not just because you love your team, is. With this situation as presently constituted, with Jimmy being hurt, it's a no lose scenario against the Boston right. Celtics. You, you lose, you say, you throw your hands up. What do you expect us to do? You got lucky, and every Celtics fan, whether they want to admit it into a microphone or not, and I know holier than thou, Mike Sure, it would probably push back on this notion. But every single one of them was happy. Every well, single he one. was claiming that it, Jimmy was faking it. Well, and no. now he'll be happy. I will not betray Mike Schur in the way that you just did. No, the entire internet, of, all of Boston Celtics fans were claiming that he was faking it. I, I kind of thought that uh, he he was embellishing yeah, a little bit, too. Can we pull up that meme that was uh, going viral yesterday for being the worst meme in the history of Heat Twitter? Mike Ryan, if you... I don't know what you're talking about. If you about. indeed invent Heat Twitter, this is your fault. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> All it's right. a Celtics logo, and it says, quote, what's the point in making the finals to not win? And then the Heat lo logo says, y'all literally can't make it, and when y'all did, y'all lost in 2002, so question mark. Too wordy. <laughs> 2022. It's fine. Sorry, 2022. What did I say? Real, 2002. It's a uh, real bad meme. It's a real bad yeah, meme. Yeah, it's really one of the worst things I've like, ever I've seen. I've read it, and I still don't really <laughs> you know, know what they mean by it. You know it. what would make this meme a lot better? I'm going to come out and say it. A horse cock. A horse cock would make all the heat memes much, much better. Or butthole eyes for the Celtics. Butthole Celtic. eyes yeah. for the Celtic. There's a Mavericks. third panel with the horse cock, and it's just like a horse <laughs> doing a horse noise. Yeah, but it's just a, it's a flaccid horse Nay. penis. Yeah. Granted, it's it's always been. There's a lot to discuss today, and uh, I think we'll we'll stop the, the heat conversation for now because my guess is we're going to be talking heat next week, too. Uh, we my to guess is we're not going to be talking heat after today. I hope to God. You don't think so? No. Did well, you see the no, we'll we'll talking Panthers a, Do you think Dan will avoid a post-mortem? Mm. Sure. Depends. Do any more cupcakes do any get more stolen cupcakes? in the next 72 hours? I mean, he kind of... Big he, win for you yesterday. <laughs> that was a huge... Was it? Yeah, you were oh, yeah. immensely popular. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I was, Dan didn't paint his... Yeah. side of it in the best no, the blaming amazon truck drivers for stealing <laughs> packages was yeah, a was really that? bad place to start <laughs> yeah man we all kind of fear it though we've all seen the ring videos i no, but i've never thought someone saw, opened never, a box I've taking things out of my box the, closed the box the back up and then like left pee in water bottles because yeah. they don't have time to yeah. use he's like does this happen a lot to you guys i was like that's honestly never, never happened to me i mean i'll get sometimes it says something was delivered and it's not there but it's there like an hour later or it's delivered to a different house and i just figure it out yeah that's happening to me. Is that my package? Yeah. I have another house in my neighborhood with the same address, but north. I have, I'm on a north street. They're on a uh, south street. So we are once a week. Mm. We're making trips over to the house. Like here you go. Really? You go to the other house? No, and give we, them I package? do. Like if, if I have their package, I'll. Have drop you it become off. friends? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say friends, but we're definitely friendly. Hmm. I don't know when you cross that bridge from friendly to friends, but it's a good question. We're getting there. Phone what numbers? is it? Do you hang out separate Never. from giving each other packages? Never. Then you're not friends. Yeah. yeah. You're just friendly. Yeah. Do you text? Never. Nope. Hmm. This I, is just a package exchange. Yeah. You're Do you ever friends. go out and think, what if the person with my same address, like, they, they might like this. Maybe I should invite them to do this thing. <laughs> I, I have people that I've thought, hey, I'm doing this thing. Should I invite X, Y? It, it's even gotten to the How point. How long does that say in your mind? Because you guarantee, I guarantee you don't actually invite them. <laughs> well, no. Here's here's the thing. Like, I'll, I'll walk you through this because I've thought about it for you know people that I text with, whatever. I'm like, you know, I don't go out much. I'm not going to pretend that I'm a man about town. I'm not. I go out sporadically at best 
So I went out for St. Patrick's Day this year, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to go out. It was, actually wasn't St. Patrick's Day because that was a Sunday. It's a school night. So I went out the Saturday before. <laughs> okay. But I went oh, you out went to the Gables? I did. Whoa. I did, yeah. And I was at actual John Martin's. I've never actually been to John Martin's. He's I used back. to do, I, well, I didn't know there was a yeah. second floor. I wish I would have gotten to the second floor sooner. There were so many fewer people up there. Uh-huh. Very crowded it's downstairs. It's fancier now. It's also exhausting going out, if I'm going to be honest mm. with you. Like when I was at John Martin's and I saw all the, you know, the, all that goes into going out and like. a pub? It is. It, it used to be more of a pub. Now it's kind of gone high end. I don't know. A, there's people there and like there's drinking involved and there's young Irish people and choice. old people. It, it, you know, I have, I, have, I think that all young and old. Makes, you just described a lot of places. You're well, like, there's young people there, old people. Well, because I don't go out. I'm telling you, this is just my experience going out to a place. I was, the at the, I was at the Madness bar the later. Actual the bar, yeah, not the bar. bar at John Martin. Love that place. There's a sign that had my autograph on it. That's that embarrassing. People send pictures of me that? sometimes. That I I know how they got yeah. it. They got that when we did the the show at Blackbird because it's the same owner, owner. Oh, owns Blackbird yeah. and the bar. So we what? signed something. The mini for, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The night that was Jess's like first when event, they, right? When Stugatz walked up to the bouncer and was like, "I'm Stugatz," and yeah. the guy was like, "What?" My yeah, wife, <laughs> my wife got assaulted at that. Thanks that was a loud school. night. Oh. Our yeah, VIP gross. area was like right by the speaker. Taylor was there yeah. as a fan. As yeah. a fan, yeah. 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 I remember that. Yeah. yeah, I remember like trying to like navigate that. Oh, <laughs> you're away. Mm. And he kept popping up. Yeah, still popping up to as this he does. Day. Yeah, singing songs. I don't about know that Jaylen he actually Brunson. works here. Jalen. <laughs> So good. Anyways, what were we talking yeah, about? What was your story? Okay, oh, so John yeah, Martin. so Eddie, so I went out yet yeah, at John Martin's for so St. Patrick's good. Day, and I'm wondering if you've run into this situation where like, so I I know I'm going out that day, but who do I want to go out with? It's a big question. Mm-hmm. So then, do I text people like, hey, you want to you know go out? Like, hey, you know, we text sometimes. I'm gonna go to this thing. What are you gonna do? And like, I I remember specifically telling my wife like, I'm not gonna mention any names. I'm like, hey, you know, like I'm gonna. I'm gonna go out. I think I'm thinking of texting, you know, this guy because you know we text from time to time. If he wants to kind of, you know, him and his wife want to go and kind of hang out with us, and she's like, "Why would you do that? <laughs> you guys, you're friends with that person like that." I'm like, "I don't know. We text sometimes. It's not how friendships work. You just text someone. and You're like, you want to go hang out? Like, I don't know. You married your mirror image. I mean, I'm gonna be the, I mean, you're the first a one. little bit frisky, and she brings you, you back. You are down right, Billy. I'm gonna cry. I, 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 there has look. There has to be an initial yeah. text to hang out, right? Yeah. And that's I how was, it works. You nailed it. I was yeah, going to initiate that. To send it. This yeah. is how you friendship to, works, Billy. Has yeah. to send well, it. I'm learning, so I was going to. Story ends with me not doing that. <laughs> I, I didn't end up texting the person because my wife shamed me and was like, "You want to be friends?" And to be honest with you, had I crossed that barrier, I do wonder if that would have led to more invitations to go out that then I would not have participated in, ruining the friendship. So it's probably good that we didn't cross that barrier because it would have just led to disappointment if there was the expectation of this is a friendship now, we're going to start hanging out. Because as previously mentioned, I'm not a man about town. So I'm not one that goes out a lot. So if this leads to the person then inviting me a lot and then it's you know a lot of no's, then they'd be mad at me, and then maybe that would end our texting relationship. I can't believe how many future scenarios you're running through just for like. Oh, one always, night out. yeah, yeah. No, my mind, my mind but is you're like wor- you're a worried choose if- your own destination book. What if we have a good time, and that opens up a whole new? Well, that's world. the worst case scenario. <laughs> what if we make? If, a we, have time, right? if we have a bad time, it's good. If we have a bad time, it's good because it's the last time this has to happen. If we have a good time, and then you have to do it again. This leads to more engagements and more responsibilities on my end. More good times. Social responsibilities. <laughs> good times are. This is why we between. need to have a show game night. Oh, that'd be great. That's a great topic. We game should talk night. about that on Mystery Crate. <laughs> I'll bring it up. There's a there's a new uh, Taylor Swift album, and is she doing the thing where we all call it a new album, but it's an old album that she re-recorded? No, no it's or, actually it, a new album. It's an actual. New songs. Okay, yeah. great, cool, awesome. Yeah. How many how many songs? Uh, I think there's like 30. It's, it's a, a double apparently album. Apparently it's a double album. And double Mike, album. Jeremy and I discovered right as we went live that there may be a reference to Kadarius Tony. Yeah, this is huge this news. Album. In the song The Alchemy, there is a lyric in the chorus that says, So when I touch down, call the amateurs and cut them from the team. I don't think that's about Kadarius Tony. I think she, she means like touch down with her private jet. Yeah. I, it's, yeah. yeah. Why are you ruining the fun? It, did she mention the fast switch energy drink yeah. player of the week? Yeah. Or I'll, I'll, sc- I'll scroll through and find out. We'll see.
it's a bit of a catch-22 in that we had to do the Heat Talk. There were people angry at us for not doing the Heat Talk. People come to us, and I really love our local audience. People come to us for that local coverage. But I promise you that'll be it for, for Heat Talk, and we'll begin having fun with this show. There was a GM that farted. I'm, I'm being told this right now. And I, I already don't want to play this video, Chris, because typically whenever there is a – suspicious noise that people allege is a fart. It's never an actual fart. Orlovsky had this happen on McAfee. Yeah. It was clearly a windshield wiper. Yeah. This one feels real to me. I'm with you. I'm kind of over the, oh, that was a noise. <laughs> he apologizes. I don't want to spoil it here, but let's play this this clip. Still got a couple of days uh, going through. Coach and I haven't sat down and go, excuse me, gone through the final board yet. That wasn't an excuse me for the fart, It might have been a tummy. It could have been a tummy growling. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a body noise. Yeah, can it's I? no chair. We'll play it let's again. Let's run it back. Still got a couple of days uh, going through. Coach and I haven't sat down and go, excuse me, gone through the final board yet. That was a facial trick, yeah, too. Yeah, there is. Could so it be could an, an inner th- fart? A throat gargle? A inner th- fart? Yeah, uh, an no, inner fart. A throat yeah. fart. What? What's an inner fart? An inner fart. When you hold a fart, but then it kind of goes in your tummy. Is and that your like, yeah. tummy growling? Yeah. yeah, an inner fart. Dan does what? these throat farts sometimes where something gets yeah, stuck Yeah, the gargle. Your... Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Can a we watch it again? I, yeah. I, an inner fart? <laughs> Is that an option? Still got a couple of days uh, going through. Coach and I haven't sat down and go, excuse me, gone through the final yeah, board yet. Been an inner fart. A classic throat inner fart. fart. I don't know if that's an inner fart or a throat fart. No, it doesn't it, look like a throat fart. It's not an outer fart, I don't think. Or do you think con- one more time? Because contextually, or seven the, more times. The excuse me could have been still for got what a he was couple about. of days uh, going through. Coach and I haven't sat down and go. Excuse me, gone through the final right. board yet? A mid sent. You don't yeah. generally stop mid sentence for an inner fart. Yeah, and, and then say excuse me afterwards. Yeah, I thought maybe excuse me made sense in the sentence that he was saying prior to, but if no. We just, if we listen to the to fart isolated, yeah, it sounds help. like a fart. It doesn't sound I'm like a traditional outer fart. I'm efforting to get the sound. <laughs> he I'll didn't be... even lift, though. No, no you like lift. The, he does he, seem to be clenching. His shoulders never dip. If you put a, a, a level on his shoulders, they don't they don't move. Good pad level on it. But yeah. that's why the sound comes out, because you got to lift well, no, because so that the sound doesn't happen. No, but he's holding, which is why he sat saying He's sat normal. He's clenched, but then the fart goes back up, well, and then the inner fart happens. Wait, is, is his body telling you that he's clenching? Let's run it back one more time. I, just the whole thing. Still got a couple of days uh, going through. Coach and I haven't sat down and go, excuse me, gone through the final uh-huh. board yet. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, excuse me? Yeah, that's, that's a that's a hold, classic hold inner fart. Okay, I think I think it's throat fart. Is an inner fart a real thing? Yeah, I've, I've never heard what, this. What is you've an inner never, fart? You've never like had one on the precipice of the bunhole, and then it goes up and makes a no, noise. No, but yeah, that's because it's no. gas. No, never, it's, literally, what is what happens? That's an inner fart. I don't think it works that way. The bubble. I don't think it's a sound entity that's just moving throughout your body, that's waiting to make Tony the sound saying. somewhere. That, that's that's gas. Mike and I are talking about the exact same thing. Yeah, you guys are gonna. All right, I got it isolated here. I got it isolated here. That's a fart. Wait, one more time? Okay, so he, he's exa- he, there's an exhale. Here's a little more context to it. A little more context. Sit down and go, excuse me, go on. Wouldn't the fart sound when it's coming out be caused by, you know, how it's leaving your body? I don't want to say butthole. But wouldn't it be caused <laughs> by, like, just your, your butt and your cheeks? Like, What's isn't that what leads? Yeah, but you don't have an inner butt. No, but the like, gas so if the gas you. goes the other way, there's the not like pops. a, a pair of them. hands inside of you that are like, you know what I mean? You're saying that the the fart oh, noise comes noise. from the cheeks, vibrating. I, that's, what, that's what Billy's accusing. I'm, yes. Well, and like the like the hole, you know, there's not you don't have an inner butthole. One, one more time, with Chris, cheeks. So how? Well, going technically, up, you do have an inner butthole. You have a rectum. You do not. Yeah, you do have an inner butthole. You have inner farts. All right, so he breathes in. We can rule out throat fart because a throat fart happens while you're talking, not while you're breathing. There wouldn't be a breath before. There wouldn't be a breath before. So I think we've deduced inner fart. There's a very important conversation happening here. Yeah, I think we need to get to the bottom. It's just anatomy, anatomy 101. That's all it is. Well, go on, go on, bring it to air. I, I don't know what to. I don't know what to do with any of She's this. shook by inner fart. I don't know what it's an inner fart is. Classic. I, You've never had a fart, fart that you're like, can't have that, and your body just kind of adjusts, and the gas goes back in. You guys sound foolish. 
you do sound foolish. There's inner farts. The gas is trapped. Chris it's trying to find its way out. And it has to go You somewhere. guys were... You just acted like You're it was something about <laughs> bubbles yeah. Yeah. back here. Just saying. Yeah, You're the board. one who said it. We're talking about whether there's a bee hole on the inside of you as well. Look, I went to Catholic school. Don't ask me about anatomy questions. That's an inner fart. You've never you've never suffered an inner fart where I've never, you're my, like I my, can't let this one out. I've, Gotta pinch it back in and never and happened can... like inside of me. I still think this is a uh, like one of growl. those Dan Levitard throat gargles. But the he breathes in simultaneously. That it, that's impossible. No, but you, you don't think that he anatomy. could be. You don't think he could be moving on the seat causing he breathed in that other sound. That's an inner fart. Stamp it. I think his butt lungs were breathing. Yeah. I I can do that like a turtle. What? I do need to issue an apology to the audience. And I I'm always so angry at Dan for spoiling shows. And I just miss one. And this is truly a sincere apology. We were talking about the Bluey finale. They put out two bonus episodes, tearjerker, really emotional stuff. And I love Bluey. I've I've been on record. Bluey is out of all the there's so much bad children's television. Bluey is heads and shoulders the best. The best male influence going on television right now. Model dad. And we talked openly about the Bluey finale, and a lot of people got legitimately upset that I spoiled an episode. And spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I was referencing the part where where Bandit takes a for sale sign out of the yard and oh no <laughs> oh I, I didn't see it yet. now I Roy's upset oh. I gave I gave but he's I, I know here. I know I'm, I'm upset can't. about the situation I'm but not upset about the spoiler that like, spoiler alert that? No. But the, the alert you give is for people who have the ability to fast forward 15 or pause it Roy's sitting he never right here. at once like how's Roy supposed to avoid that spoiler no 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 no, 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 no. he can put two fingers in the ears uh, can, no 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 he can give me a look that says don't spoil this for me I'm not upset about the spoiler Huh. I'm upset about that situation. They're doing that. Oh, that's you wanted you wanted him to move. No, I didn't want him to move. I didn't, I didn't want well, him to move. Well, then, then like, spoiler, the possibility well, of moving. Roy, spoiler alert. Of spoilers. They stay. Hold on a second. <laughs> Whoa, come on, man. I still haven't even seen Breaking Bad. <laughs> oh no. Two very different shows, but we'll talk about Giancarlo Esposito in a second. <laughs> so Bluey is a, a tremendous show, and it's a little creepy to watch it without kids. I wouldn't recommend that. But if you if if you're a young parent, especially. Hold on, you're apologizing to whom? I'm apolog. I made people genuinely mad. But whom? A lot of people in my mentions. But like people, like grown people. Grown, grown people who, with children. Who cares? <laughs> who cares about grown people I mean, getting a kids show spoiled for them? I mean, you can have that. You're half-ass watching okay. anyway. Okay, we can have the not this show. attitude about everything, but I, I, especially for me, someone that gets angry and frustrated with Dan when he's constantly spoiling things. He ruins Succession. Shiv. shiv. Yeah, he ruins Succession. Outside of Breaking Bad, probably the best show, the best drama of the last 15 years. And he just totally ruined it, hours removed from it. And it kind of diluted the experience for me. As someone that's been on the receiving end of that, I am sincerely sorry. No joke, not not a play. I know we have characters going around this thing, and it's all fun and games. But really genuinely sorry that I that I ruined that episode of Bluey for you. Because you needed to know whether or not they moved. Even also, you didn't know that they, that was even a plot line. If you hadn't watched it, you might as well like watch. It's about the journey, not about the end. It's about that moment. So, Mike, would you say you blew it, Jeremy? I am. Do we? Do you go away if the Bulls win tonight? <laughs> like, just like away that, from the show forever. Just, is that an option? I mean, I would think we'd get more of Jeremy if the heat season ends because he'll have more time. Yeah, I'll be around. Yeah, yeah I'll, be around. I'll be here yeah, with plenty of time to do anything you guys like me to do. But he'll be around talking about the heat. I, it's a good thing to have. Like for me personally, counterbalancing your act with mine, it's it helps me, and it also makes me realize that I used to be that for the listening audience. Act? I don't, and, and I now, I now receive it a lot better. So I, I want to thank you. So you're around so that Mike looks good. Generally. Hmm. I appreciate all of that. Do you get a ring if the Heat go on a run you and would. win? You, you know, would. I think I would. Yeah, you would. Wow, that you would, like and I'm you deserve it. By the way, thank so you. That's I think why you're exceptional you on television. I like you. you. 
as a person on air, <laughs> you change a little bit and you amplify some more annoying aspects of your personality. But I do like you, and I I do root for your teams to be successful. Just not this one. Thank I want them you. Up. I want them just. I think is this a situation where like we can say this about Jeremy, but like no one else can say this about Jeremy? Don't come after Jeremy. Barrett. Like I Thanks, can do guys. That. Yeah. No, I get very. I I think you're a talent kid. Because I would be meaner to you on air if I knew that people would be nice to you off air. Yeah, they're not, but thank you. Exactly. So I, I reserve myself. Thank you. Yeah. There is a Tony doesn't. There's a big fight happening what? this weekend. Jeremy, if I could give you any advice, it would be steal a cupcake and the perception <laughs> of you will change yeah. immensely one that, day to that, the next. That, I scream that by that, that's a move. Just steal from Dan's assistant. That's a move. That's a move. Steal. Uh, Tony, to borrow a phrase from you, Eat I've been cupcake. I've been following Stop the steal. The, the fight game tangentially, yeah, just exclusively through IG reels and, and social media clips and what gets thrown in the group chat. And I've been alerted over the last few months to this Ryan Garcia character who appears to be having a full-on mental health breakdown right in front of our, our, our eyes. And Ryan Garcia is a boxer of repute, uh, Golden Boy Promotions, hell of a mentor he's picked out for himself. Yeah, right. <laughs> and... Is this is this legit? Because I watch these videos and it and it feels legit. It feels like someone's going through it. Someone that might also other fighters accuse him of drug use. I mean, the the signs are there. There's really erratic behavior. I'm not gonna watch this fight, but I am drawn to what a circus this has become. So there's a lot of stuff to talk about in this situation. One that there's a fight in boxing that is this weekend. And that basically nobody knows about because the Barclays Center is almost completely f like empty. Nobody's bought in tickets yet. Um, Devin Haney, good, really good boxer. Ryan Garcia lost to Javante Davis after that liver shot that we saw. And since that point in, in his career, in his life, things have kind of gone off the rails. He's done a lot of strange, erratic stuff on social media. He's gone on spaces. He's done videos. He was alleging that there was like some sort of hit. There was like the CIA was after him and that... People in Bohemian Grove, this the, the conspiracy of Bohemian Grove and all that. He's also kind of like low key. He's very handsome, high key, handsome guy. Good looking so guy, yeah. He's a and so like he has this standum around him that as anyone that's controversial these days has. Yeah, and again, being linked with Oscar de la Hoya and his past, there have been allegations that. He acts a little bit too weird for somebody who's not, you know. Dude, he's out there selling fights, and he's had these pressers. To trying to sell he's fights. Trying to, he's out there attempting to sell fights. And I, I've, I've seen Mike Tyson threaten to, to, to rape press members in the audience. And I've never seen the opposing fighter be as rattled as they are when they're opposite of Ryan Garcia attempting to sell a fight because this is like some truly off the wall behavior. It's weird. It's weird. And it's not like the usual shit talking back and forth. Oh, you suck. Oh, this, that, and the third. It's like just weird behavior. He's doing things that a normal person wouldn't do, right? He's trying to like change the way that fights get promoted, but it feels like it's not really working. And he's also a plus 575 dog, right? So, so it's not like he's. Even that close. Uh, uh, not Devonta Davis. Uh, I'm, I don't know who this other fighter is. I'm, uh, I, I barely Haney, know who. I Devin barely know Haney, Ryan Garcia. Devin is. Haney is a minus nine ten favorite. Okay, as the champion. But he was out there making junior half a million dollar bets on like weight. I don't. I don't understand what's going on. The here boxing whatsoever. game, to be honest, and, and me and Chris were talking about this beforehand. The boxing game without a Paul in it, outside of like mm -hmm. Tank, outside of Bud Crawford, outside of Spence. Outside of like those big names, Canelo maybe. Yeah. And now the heavyweights kind of are taking the sideshow fights. Right, right. And so. Ganu, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury. Like outside of those couple of names, nobody's really intrigued for boxing whatsoever. No. So it feels like Ryan Garcia is trying to get over on everybody with social media, but it's just making him look like a weirdo. But it, so this is how you stick out in in combat sports lately. We've seen it with Colby. We've seen it with uh, McGregor, who was not because people people have been doing these things in the fight game for quite some time. They're all derivative from Muhammad Ali, really. But the new school way of doing it, everyone's kind of like at the altar of Conor McGregor. And even Jake Paul found his way, although the Paul brothers have both really mellowed out since they first burst onto the scene. This isn't actually making an impact in terms of selling fights. It's just it's just someone having a public mental health crisis. Uh, a alleged drug use, alleged mental health crisis. It's just a weird way to do it. And Oscar continues to say he's fine, even though we continue to see with our own eyes he's not fine. But Oscar kept saying he was fine when right. he was going through <laughs> Exactly. It.
All right, local audience that comes here for some hockey talk, here's a hockey segment for you, and it's all like menu items. You don't dig hockey. I get it. You should. Hockey playoffs are about to spar- uh, start. Dude, the next two weeks, you can make the just because of how many games yeah. we get, you can make the argument the first round's the best. I like the second round because you got the quality matchups and it's still volume, but this is so good. Like this, if you're tr- if you're thinking of giving hockey a try, these next couple weeks is the best. And all the matchups outside of maybe for one in Washington, New York, Rangers, where the, yeah. where the expectation is the Rangers kind of march on through there. All of these are really good, and even uh, last night, I don't know the Stars and Golden Knights. Um, that matchup's pretty. It's wow. not a great matchup. I don't think that's going to last too long. What a take! <laughs> what a take! As, uh, as oh, you only said there was one matchup that, that was no, gonna... I, yeah, because I'm super in the Stars Golden Knights, Puck boys. super into it. But I'm sure you get into it in Puck Boys, and I want to talk hockey in this segment. By the way, I told you I live the gimmick. I got three tickets to Sunday's game one, twelve thirty, and bringing the daughter. Also, having a kid, as we all know, expensive proposition. More expensive when you want to start going to these uh, to these sporting events. But then I do the cost analysis. Well, I'll have to get a sitter and all of that. Thankfully, I have the game time app, so I'm not surprised by any hidden fees. So I can just see and do the cost analysis live there with my wife. If you want to go to any of these spectacular hockey playoff games, except for the ones in Dallas and Las Vegas where just Roy's apparently out on. I want to find out why. The defending that- Stanley Cup champions? You have no faith in Against them? the top seed in the West. Uh, Against Dallas the- is just the better team. Dallas does look good. Yeah, but Dallas is the better team, mm-hmm. and Vegas. So were the is, Bruins last and, and that doesn't last year. Make a difference. But but well Mark said. Stone is also coming back, and <laughs> they're overwhelming. Hurdle is finding his footing. They they're a totally different team. Anyways, if you like Roy, don't feel the need to go to that series. Maybe you want to find another series. I think Boston Toronto could be a fun one. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use code Dan for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Last minute tickets. The closer you get to the event, oftentimes the lower the ticket price is. So if you have the uh, freedom and mobility in your life, where you don't need set plans and a babysitter, maybe wait till the uh, to puck drop. Do that. Lowest price guaranteed. You get to see what your view would be from your seat. You have all those fees up front, so you're not surprised by anything. And if for whatever reason you find another marketplace out there where there has a lower price, Game Time will match it and more. So download the Game Time app. That is code D A N on your first purchase. I've been told by several people who have been shopping for tickets they've done that and they've appreciated the. $20 off. You're not into Dallas, Vegas, which is wild to me. Crazy. Wild. I know, Billy, you're going to be watching that one. I'm want- going to be watching. Let's Jonathan talk- Marsha shot 69 points. Huh? Marsha show. That one. <laughs> Honestly, they, they're they kicking them to the curb. That, that Vegas Golden Knight team, that franchise, they don't hold back. They what The difficult conversation that we're having about Jimmy Butler, Vegas has a way of just Get rid of guys and moving on to the next one because they also find ways to manipulate the salary cap that I'm not a huge fan of. But you want to say that Vegas isn't a good team. And by the way, Aiden Hill, I would have appreciated you struggling uh, like this against mm-hmm. us. No, I'm, I'm just saying that the Stars are that just are just that much better than the Golden Knights. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I think I think the Stars go through too. But I mean, you you know, you went to that building in mm-hmm. Vegas. Yeah, the you know the atmosphere is going to get them through. I think atmosphere helps make it a more difficult series. I do. It seemed as though last time people were trying to duck Edmonton, by the way, as you were out here touting Dallas, which I also personally rate, have a future on them too. It felt like the Kings and the Knights were trading off opportunities to avoid Edmonton. Well, the Kings probably won't last long in that series either. I mean, Kings, are gonna, dra- King, Kings are gonna drag games into the mud. Yeah. It's it's the NHL playoffs, man. You don't know who's gonna get goalied. Mm-hmm. All these series feel like they can be long. Let's talk about Florida. Uh, I'm I imagine you and David Dwork do that. We I know where Billy stands on this. Mm, where yeah, yeah. where thinks, do I stand? You think right the, the Panthers oh, are done? Oh, yeah, that's true. You yeah. think your character I was just looking up done. Keegan Colasar. <laughs> what kind of problems he's going to bring to Dallas. Obviously, Florida Panther fans have uh, PTSD with uh, Vasilevsky. Yeah. It's, it's a bit of a different Tampa Bay Lightning team. All the uh, the role players have uh, are now – there were guys that were on those teams that beat Florida – that were playing lesser roles that have elevated their game. The Hagels, the Sorellis of the world, Pauls of the world. Their, Points. Their Braden Point has always kind of been good, but even he's elevated a little bit more, being the recipient of a lot of Kucherov assists. Kucherov always tends to show up against really good teams. Stamkos. 
Uh, he's still there. This is probably the last go around, although we've said that for a couple of years with Tampa. Defensively, they have Hedman and they've That's worked, it. And they, uh, Sogachev's coming back. They, well. They've worked in a bunch of new names. So what I'm saying is the Lightning team is a bit different from when you last faced them, but the, the boogeymen that were on those teams are still kind of there. And for Florida, yeah, you got Bob, you got Barkov, you have the 38th best player in the playoffs, according to ESPN.com, ah, Aaron Ekblad. That, uh, oh, <laughs> coming oh, back. God. We'll talk How, how's about, uh, yeah? We'll talk about we'll that talk about that list in, in, in a brief moment. But Matthew Kachuk, who by the way, very heartwarming to see, he got engaged. Yep, yeah. he got engaged uh, yesterday, and I saw people liken this to World War II soldiers before they went off getting married, <laughs> before they while they knew they were going to storm the beaches of Normandy, just locking that down beforehand. Good comparison. Yeah. Considering the injuries last year, it is sort of like that. <laughs> uh, Matthew Kachuk actually had a really surprising quote because Alexander Barkov is a pretty low key guy that we need to find a Silas for. Barkov apparently drives like a maniac. This is courtesy of Matthew Kachuk. We were going to invite Barky to this, but he's too fast of a driver. Yeah. Is, he's still, he? is he still driving like a lunatic? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. So usually the European guys have a, have a heavy foot. Somebody was telling me he made it from Boca to the airport in like seven minutes. Yes. Yeah. What I was should that drive be? 35. <laughs> he's got like a purple car, though, like now, like a Viper. But I don't know cars at all, but like, I don't know. He pulls it off. Since we're talking about racing, who's leading the team in speeding tickets? It's probably got to be Barky, which sucks because over in Finland, don't you get dinged on like he what got you a make? huge one? He got like a Solani one, like a fifty thousand so dollars ticket. So Team Solani's gotten two that have been over fifty thousand. It's based on your salary. Yeah, you don't. You can't get caught speeding in a golf cart. I guess that's lucky for me. Yeah. You can get caught in a golf cart doing other things, as uh, former head coaches have yeah. found out here of the uh, the Florida Panthers. So what do yeah. you think is going to happen in this series against Tampa? The series price has gone up, coincidentally. If you check DraftKings Sportsbook, I think it started at minus 170. It's at minus 180, uh, I, I've seen recently. So either the public's jumping on Florida or uh, the odds makers are changing their tune on this one a bit. Yeah, the Panthers are a far deeper team. They have better metrics, they're better the the best in the league defensively, the high scoring team. They got great five great, on five numbers. Yeah, great five on five. That's numbers. the key for me. You and, gotta stay out of the penalty box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that because Tampa has the best power play in yeah, the league. Kucherov, so to, you know, it's a, Kucherov plays a style that isn't like Nathan McKinnon, where you, you, it just jumps off the screen. He kind of stays off the periphery. Remember when Huberto had like 110 points? Yeah. He would just kind of like quarterback things from one end of the rink. Kucherov just finds these incredible passing lanes where you don't think there are, and he's just a maven on that special teams. If you give him a man advantage, he'll pick you apart. Their power play is better than Edmonton's? They're the best in the league. That is crazy. Yeah, because Ed, Edmonton had the greatest power play that I'd probably ever seen, which is probably why <laughs> they were trying to avoid Edmonton last night between the Kings and and Knights, but you think that Florida's going to win this series, yes? In five. In five? Ooh, five. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go in Cats long. in five. Oh, a gentleman's sweep? I yeah. think we might have a game seven. I think no. it's going to be scary. I, th- I think we do it, but I think it's going to be You know scary. you're going to get goalied at least like two games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe you survive one of those games because Bob is also out there goal- uh, goaling them, but you're, you're definitely going to get goalied. My wife got mad at me last night because at like 3 a.m. I just woke up in the middle of the night. 88! <laughs> That's what Yeah. I mean, they got they got players at haunt, and right now you gotta you gotta hand it to them. They're daddy, and you gotta prove to them that they're not daddy anymore. Well, the Panthers are gonna close the book on this Lightning era, this series. Close That's why the I'm excited. Book on the Lightning era Whoa. entirely. Wow. Yeah, it's yes. over. It's Man. over for that team. It it's over. The it's, Lightning are kind of at where the Heat are, where if they if they yeah. lose this series, o- there o- probably only, will be a, yeah a reset. Yeah. The, only they've had the ultimate success in that they've li- uh, lifted their championship, where the Heat have just made it to the dance. But I'm with you. Sam Coase is probably gone, and they've navigated to the best of their ability, their salary cap situation. Well, with Stamkos, he wanted an extension. The team wouldn't give it to him, and he wanted out. He went out. So I don't know what's mm. going to happen in the offseason. Uh, it's not looking good for that. But he's still on the team. Maybe he'll help on the power play, and Jess, that'll be it. have you adopted the Florida Panthers? Yeah. I feel like that clip, finding out that Bob is an insane oh, driver. Bar- no, no, it's Barkov. Bar- yeah. Bo- but Bob would, our goalie. Bob yeah. so wouldn't close. be as okay. shocking. Barkov is pretty I thought we were talking about Bob the whole time. Um, <laughs> no. It makes me captain. like them even less. Really? Because the, oh. the driving around here is bad enough. Knowing that a member of the What's Panthers contributes here? to the... I mean, he oh, said... Broward County. Driving to he the, said Boca. That's it's basically the ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I assume Beach, he's talking yeah. about the Fort Lauderdale Airport from Boca. Yeah. yeah. Not the West Palm Beach yeah. one. Yeah. I mean, come on. What are we doing? Every Every team has a lunatic driver. Roy's ours. 
Yes. <laughs> please stop doing that. Yeah. Puck. Well, no, you Puck. please stop doing that. Please stop driving like that. I, you're the reason why I take the train these days. I'm huh. not a lunatic driver, especially in this town and in, in this state. No. You're I'm, just a I'm, byproduct of the crazy town. I don't want to mis- yeah. misrepresent. You're not a lunatic driver. You have a lead foot. Like, you drive quick. Yeah, it sounded like you completely misrepresented me in yeah, that situation. I mean, a lunatic, yeah. lead foot, I mean, uh, tomato, tomato. You have had multiple accidents. Tomato, potato. It's like an inner you part hit, and an outer part. You Still hit Billy once in the parking lot. We don't need to relive that. <laughs> Roy, you really think Braden Point's team is just going to lay down? They're not going to lay down, no. But they are going to lose. 